Hey friends, it's Taki Deris. So, just getting into it. I have been noticing a lot of tourism in Japan for a good while now. And I'm really glad that my friends and family can come now, you know, and experience Japan. I'm sure a lot of you are really stoked in planning your trip here. I know a lot of you guys are looking at your Instagram reels of places to go to in Japan, really weird things and cafes that you guys wanna try in Japan. I'd be lying if I wasn't just a little bit bittersweet over the fact that your girl is not gonna be going to uh, Kyoto during the summer anytime soon. I know that a lot of you who want to come to Japan are looking at top 10 places that you should go to in Japan, top 10 food you should try in Japan, or those really aesthetic Instagram reels that you guys want to try maybe some cool cafe or go to the Pokemon Center. So this video is going to be anything but that. This video is going to be going over places that you cannot go in Japan and will not go in Japan unless you would like to get arrested. So I know a lot of you guys are thinking what? Why would I want to know about places I can't go to in Japan? I want to experience the culture, Aki, because people are curious and there are literally millions of videos, articles, and lists of places that you can go to in Japan. That's all basically taken care of on the internet, I feel. But nobody ever talks about places that you can't go. Like, when, don't you want to know why? It has nothing to do with the fact that you're a foreigner. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're not cool enough. Okay, maybe some places. But, point is, is that there are those places and they are still standing today. So many of you are wondering, like, why would you still have a place standing that people can't even interact with or go to? So I'm gonna list out places that you cannot and will not go to in Japan. Let's go. Okay, so the first location is called Yawata no Yabushirazu. And this is a forest in Chiba Prefecture that is said that once you go in, you cannot come out. And you will never come out because it seems that the rumor surrounding this forest is that once you go in, you get sucked into another dimension. So because of that, the forest is actually closed off and encased in sort of like this brick wall. I have really wanted to at least visit this even if I can only see it from the outside. Spoilers, I ended up going to the forest anyway. That's in the next video. Stay tuned for it. But weirdly enough, it is maintained. I have seen photos of some of these trees being cut down. So someone is definitely going in there. But either way, the public, whether you're a tourist or whether you're a resident, whether you have been born and raised in Japan, it doesn't matter. They don't allow anyone to go into this forest. If you ask me, I think it's probably like a marketing stunt so that people can go to Chiba Prefecture, but who knows. This is a very perfectly cut off little forest that they have built a brick wall around and it has caused so much attention. So there's been so many different rumors surrounding it. Another rumor says that if you enter here and do manage to come back out of the forest, you will definitely be cursed. In which case I feel bad for the guy that's like maintaining that forest on a weekly basis. The forest is located a short walk from the JR Honyawada station. And in this forest, the bamboo grows so thick that the inside can barely be seen. If not for the surrounding legend, this lot in the middle of the city would be a prime real estate. Although it is rather small at approximately 18 meters square, matching its historical descriptions from the Edo period. The only part of this forest that is not forbidden to enter is the small shrine called Shirazu Mori Jinja. On the right side of the Tori Gate, you will notice what is called the Shirazu Yawatamori Monument, which was erected in 1857 by Isaya Uhei of the Edo period. According to the writings from the Edo period, this forest once held a very diverse variety of trees, ranging from thin bamboo to lacquer trees to pine, cedar, oak, and even chestnut. However, it has since been overrun with thick bamboo and is now a bamboo forest. In a photo from approximately 1912, a small tea shop appears in front of the forest. As late as during the 2000s, three large trees, including two that appear to be the ones from the photo of the tea shop, stood in the walkway in front, as can be seen in the shot from 2015. The forbidden area was cut into around that time to allow pedestrians a wider sidewalk, unknowingly leading them into the edge of this land. And in 2021, the trees were taken down in order to expand the sidewalk, removing the boundary of the forest. And from what I can read here, although there's like no official reason given for this area being banned, there are numerous legends surrounding it, and entry into the forest is still banned since the Edo period. I did find a nice little tale here. It says here during the Manji era around 1658 to 1661, a man named Tokugawa Mitsukuni, also known as Mito Komon, is said to have gone in alone out of curiosity. According to the folktale, yokai surrounded the man and the path that he came in on was gone when he turned around. It is then said that a god, which is perhaps the leader of the yokai, appeared in the guise of an elderly man with white hair, telling him that the reason the area was forbidden was for reasons involving 
Haira no Masakado, which angered him. The man who entered the forest was given special treatment due to his high status and permitted to return safely. This story was later spread in the depiction of Japanese art. There's a couple of folk legends surrounding this forest, and here's another one of them. It is said that during the nights, the sound of a weaving loom could be heard from the forest, which would always stop at dawn. Late one night, a young girl who had never been seen before came out to borrow an osa, which is a tool used for passing through the vertical strings when weaving on the loom. So it was lent to her. However, when it was collected back, it was sticky with what it appeared to be fresh blood. Another theory surrounding why this forest is banned from entering has to do with also apparently a noble's ancient tomb that lies inside of the forest. This next location is probably my personal favorite on this list, and it is called Oiran Buchi. Oiran Buchi is located in Yamanashi Prefecture, and it also bears the local name of Choshi Falls. The official name given to these falls is also called the 55 Person Pool. You will see why in just a second. Although it is a beautiful mountainside spot full of greenery surrounding a waterfall and its basin, experienced explorers have reported that they wouldn't go near the area at night. It's famous as being one of the most haunted spots in Japan due to an incident from the Sengoku era. Following the death of Katsuyori Takeda, the Kuroyama gold mine, which was located in the mountain of Tosakayama, had been his army's treasure, was closed. The large volumes of gold derived from it brought prosperity to the Takeda house, and there were still significant amounts of it left in the mine. Fearing that information about the mine would be leaked, a decision was made to kill the subordinates who worked at the mine, along with 55 courtesans who dealt with the miners in order to keep them all silent. The army then held a banquet to thank the courtesans for their hard work, and gathered the courtesans on top of a bridge suspended above the river. The courtesans were then made to dance on top of the bridge, where the vines were eventually intentionally cut, sending all these courtesans to the basin of the waterfall to their death. Some had managed to survive the fall, drifting to a village downstream Stream, but because the villagers had been notified not to help any prostitutes, nobody would help, and all died. Afterwards, the villagers felt sorry and buried them, and built a courtesan hall in order to hold a memorial service. Although the memorial exists to this day, there is no physical evidence remaining as proof of the incident. Technically, this location is restricted, but despite that, there are still many people who attempt to visit this bridge to this day. I kind of want to go to this area just because it does have true history behind it. That's kind of like the cool part about some haunted places that when you find out that there is actually historical meaning behind it, even if you are not a superstitious person, I think it would still be interesting to go for history's sake. There are camping spots near this location where people have frequently claimed to have spot young girls walking around. The claims say that you can hear the sounds and the screams of girls falling off of a cliff, and even the thin voice of a young girl singing in the middle of the night. Some would even claim that before the song would even start, the radios would turn on. Another traveler who visited this location claimed to see a woman in the river struggling to swim who was wearing a kimono. On on top of that, it seems that in addition to the courtesan's murder, this location is also a known spot for suicides. Today, if you try to visit this area, it is said that the roads are closed off by chains, prohibiting entry to anyone due to also other reasons, such as the deterioration of the cliff and frequent car accidents. And the last banned location on this list is the Fukushima Exclusion Zones. After the March 11, 2011 Great East Japan earthquake, and its resulting tsunami and nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, 160,000 people across 11 districts were forced to evacuate their homes and leave the area due to a nuclear fallout. Numerous pets and farm animals were abandoned, with rescue teams taking cats and dogs to shelters in other prefectures and moving cattle off the highways. Abandoned buildings and businesses have been photographed, with merchandise still covering the shelves and also the floors. Arcades, pachinko parlors, and laundromats look barely different, save for the lack of electricity. Although some stores show signs of robbery, they have mostly remained untouched. Through intensive decontamination efforts, much of the prefecture is now restored and safe to live in. Radiation levels are now barely higher than those from before the earthquake. Evacuation orders have been lifted in all 11 districts in which they had been issued, although some parts of some of those districts are still off limits. As most people began new lives elsewhere post-evacuation and the entire prefecture remained stigmatized, 
Life in the previously evacuated districts isn't back to normal, with many areas largely deserted. Some former residents expressed that they would be too sad going back and living there amongst the abandoned buildings. Along the highway, cars and industrial trucks occasionally pass by, but it is rare to see anyone walking in these towns. There are no functioning hotels, restaurants, convenience stores, or other retail businesses. There are only a third of the number of boats that used to operate nearby. And as of this year in 2023, only a very small part remains prohibited, including the plant itself. However, there are some workers that are allowed to go into these areas, as well as one-time visits under certain circumstances for tour groups. So there you have it. Three places that are banned in Japan. I'd like to see you try. No, please don't. Uh, I don't want anyone to get in trouble here. Though I will say I am very tempted to at least go in the vicinity of the Oranbuchi area just for historical sake, but that's just me. But let me know, guys, what you guys thought of this list. If you guys know of any other banned areas of Japan, let me know in the comments below. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!